Hey, this is Leo for Actualized.org, and in this video, we're talking about introverts versus extroverts. Okay, welcome back. So let's talk about introverts versus extroverts. What is an introvert really? What is an extrovert really? And how does this play into the bigger picture of your life? How is this gonna affect the performance of your life, the kind of results you get in your life? And how can you start to play with these variables? Because I'm not so much interested in just defining introversion and extroversion, which I'm gonna do here on a much deeper level than you will get in most other places. But I'm also interested in how to actually take those and start to, to play with them in your life and tune them to get the best results that you can possibly get. All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about some definitions. We're gonna go into a deep understanding of what introversion is versus extroversion. We're gonna talk about some of the origins of these terms. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons, and then we're gonna get into some techniques for how to actually change this stuff. That's really exciting. All right, so if you're looking forward to being more extroverted or more introverted or vice versa, then we've got you covered here. So let's get into this, some definitions. Well, before I even give you some definitions, let's talk about a little bit of kind of the history. Where did, where did these terms even come from? Well, this is something that came from uh, an old school psychologist in the early 1900s, Carl Jung. He, what he did is he started to create personality types and he started to create these archetypes of, uh, you know, what, what psyches fell into. So he started looking at people and started seeing what are kind of the common strands between people. And some of the archetypes that he identified are now used in the Myers-Briggs personality assessment type. You might have taken that at work or at school, in college, someplace else, online. So that is deriving from his work. And there he made the really, really kind of fundamental distinction in psychology of the introvert and the extrovert. So what does this mean? Well, quite simply, it, you you have a good understanding of it already, but we're gonna go into a deeper understanding of it. So an introvert is someone who is comfortable and really enjoys being by themselves. And they are in their head more than they are out in the real world. So they like being in their head, they like to be deep thinkers, they like to be by themselves, they're comfortable being alone, they don't particularly enjoy being in loud, noisy environments, and their energy tends to drain when they're out there interacting and socializing with other people. So this is what you might stereotype as the shy person, although that's really not a good way to think about it. It's kind of a caricature, cartoon caricature, and it's greatly exaggerated. So what's the extrovert? Well, the extrovert is the opposite of that. The extrovert is the social butterfly. This is the person that loves to go out there and schmooze with people, he likes to gossip, he likes to talk, he's verbose, she is uh, really excited by people, she draws her energy from other people from the external environment, and she doesn't like to be by herself, and he doesn't like to be in his head all the time. He prefers to be out there with people interacting with the world, groping, feeling, looking, observing, being much more sensory rather than logical and analytical. So that is the extrovert. Those are the two kind of... Uh, classic definitions. Now, as far as really understanding what this is, this is a really powerful idea that I got from one of Evan Pagan's seminars uh, about personality types, is they really went into a deep discussion of what introversion versus extroversion is. And this really hit me so hard when I, when I saw this. And I, I really understood this with my mind's eye. Here's how it is. Here's what's really, really going on. And when people talk about the fact that an introvert, his battery gets drained when he's out, and about talking with people and that his battery charges up when he's by himself and the vice, you know, the opposite of that for an extrovert. Here's why that's happening. So an introvert on the fundamental level thinks and believes that his world is in his mind. He lives in a world of ideas. What's real is not out there. What's real is in here. So what's literally going on here is that he's so absorbed in the thoughts and the analysis and the processing that he does on all the stimulation and all the, all the, the sensory perception that he's getting from the world that he needs to process that. 
So for example, an extrovert, when he goes in and he talks to a group of people, he'll just go in there and immediately right off the bat, he'll have something to say, he's in there, he's, he's got energy, bam, 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 things are going, right? You ask him a question, he'll just respond right off the cuff, maybe he'll even say something that he didn't mean to say, but he'll just backtrack, and then he'll say something else, and he'll just shrug it off. That's kind of how an extrovert goes. As an introvert, and this is how I am, I am an introvert, very much so, and if you're an introvert, you're gonna to relate to this. As an introvert, that strikes us as very foreign, right? That's not how we process the world. How we process the world is we go into that situation, someone asks us a question, and it takes us about a second or two to kind of come up with an answer to it, and then respond. We don't respond off the cuff. And the reason that is, is because we, we are living in our own heads, and our reality is here, it's not out there. And so if our reality is in here, literally what's happening is that something comes in, it takes me more time and also more energy than an extrovert to process it and then give back a response. And then I'm trying to see in my head whether the response that I give is gonna be authentic and accurate. Because again, just because I give the response does not mean that the value is in the response. The value is in how the response then strikes me. So I will be more reflective. I'll say something and I'll say, hmm, I wonder what he thought of that. I wonder if that is what I actually meant to say. See, that's what's gonna go on in an introvert's mind. With an extrovert, for an extrovert, it's the opposite. It's like what's real is out there, right? The real world is out there, it's in the world. It's something that I can grope. It's something that I can see. It's something that I can smell and taste and hear and something I can smile at and frown at and have an emotional interaction with. Whereas my thoughts about it, that's secondary. It's not that an extrovert doesn't have thoughts. Sure he does. It's just that it's, it's that, it's that, at a very kind of fundamental baseline level, he sees his reality really being out there. And the thoughts as being like a secondary layer added on top of that. So for him, he's gonna go out there and he's just gonna talk. Sometimes, for example, an extrovert will say things that he didn't even mean to say. And you'll, you'll notice because an extrovert is really good at backtracking and kind of backpedaling. And he'll say something, and maybe he'll say something wrong, he'll have a mispronunciation or whatever, and he'll immediately just say, oh, I didn't mean to say that, or oh, that's not what I meant, or whatever, and he just kind of glosses over it and he says something new. Because for an extrovert, the way that it works is that literally he has to him say, himself say it before he even recognizes whether it's real or not for him. So he'll just blurt it out there. He's not gonna say it in his mind first, the way an introvert will. He'll just blurt it out, and then he'll think about it and he'll say, hmm, I wonder, yep, that's what I meant to say, or nope, that's not what I meant to say. And that's why an extrovert will be more verbose, more talkative. A lot of times they can seem a little bit more shallow because they just kind of throw stuff out there without thinking about it too much. And that's kind of what makes them very spontaneous, engaging and charismatic. That is really the deep difference, right? It's the difference of what is real. And you can actually play with this. It's kind of, it's kind of funny. Sometimes, because I'm very introverted, when I have this idea and I have this deep understanding in my, on the forefront of my mind and I go out, let's say I go out to a club or I go out to some bar or I'm just walking around in some public place with their people and I can literally kind of, when I'm thinking about this, I can kind of meditate on it and I can flip myself. I can do that flip where I see that I'm walking around and I'm observing people and I'm doing my, my normal introvert thing and I'm just thinking about, mm, you know, oh, that person this, this is that and I'm just, I, I can feel and then I recognize, oh, I'm in my mind. I can flip that and I can be perceptory in the sense that perception is like I'm taking in perception and things are very tactile for me. And when I make that transition in my mind, like the, there's like a, a, a switch that flips and all of a sudden I can say, okay, why don't I be an extrovert right now? And I can literally um, start, start just taking in whatever's there, taking in and stop thinking about it. Just like start taking it in and you start to feel like there's a, a very subtle but, but also significant uh, shift when you do that. And it's unnatural for me to be that way, but you know, when I'm doing it consciously, I, I can kind of shift, shift myself. And it's, it's kind of freaky, it's kind of cool. I encourage you to try that. Try that if you're an introvert, go next time you're out and about with people, try to flip yourself. And if you're an extrovert, also do the opposite. Try to get in your head all of a sudden when you're out and about and just see how it feels. You're starting to get a real uh, firsthand experience of the difference between, uh, between these two personality types. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of introverts and extroverts. Well, pretty obvious some of the stuff here. 
is that an introvert is going to be better at introspection. An introvert is going to be better at analytical things, logical things, planning, doing creative things. An extrovert is going to be better at socializing with people and doing things that require cooperation, management, leadership, that kind of stuff. Just on a surface level. These are, you know, I'm painting with broad strokes. This does not mean that if you're an extrovert, you cannot be a really great writer or a really great thinker. And vice versa, if you're an introvert, that does not mean that you can't be a great manager or a great leader or even a great socializer. You can. And in fact, that leads me to the next point. And the next point is that uh, this is a big trap of, uh, of thinking between should I be an introvert, should I be an extrovert, or getting so caught up in who you really are. Like, oh, I'm a real introvert. I'm a real extrovert. And that's just how I am. And so getting caught up in that and thinking that you have to choose sides. You don't have to choose sides. In fact, I think that as a full, well-rounded, fully self-developed, self-actualized human being, you need to have both. You need to value both. You need to see that both of these, each one of them has its own sets of pros and its own sense of cons, and that if you are extremely introverted, you are not gonna have the best kind of life. And if you're extremely extroverted, you're also not gonna have the best kind of life. You really want to be able to blend the two in a way. And when you start to blend them, what I've noticed is that not, it's not the case that you start to somehow average out, it's actually the case that they kind of, they're cumulative. So what you're doing is you're taking the best of being an introvert, and you're taking the best of being an extrovert, and you're making those your strengths, and you're dropping away the cons. And so now you just have the strengths, not the weaknesses, and you get uh, you get conscious control over this stuff. So when you need to be extroverted, you can go out there and be extroverted. And when you need to be introverted, you go out there and you be introverted. And this is important because I found that to get the kind of amazing results that I want in my life, for example, certain success in business or uh, certain success in relationships, I really had to work on my introversion. I had to get out of it and become more extroverted. I had to do that work. Otherwise, I saw that my life was just not nearly at the potential that it could be. And I can imagine the same thing for an extreme extrovert is that if they're always extroverted then they're starting a business or they're doing something like personal development even, then that's going to hurt them because they are not doing enough contemplation, enough introspection, and they're going to want to uh, move themselves here and shift towards introversion and get some of those strengths up in their repertoire, right? So really, I challenge you to not make this an either or choice, but a both. You want both. You want to be a fully well-rounded human being, right? You don't want to be lopsided here. And I think that that is really how we were intended to be. That's how kind of our brains were designed, is that we want to be incorporating both. And you need both to really have a rich, successful life. Okay. And the last point that I want to get into is actually some practical techniques. So we talked a lot about the theory. What are the specific ways that you can go about starting to shift yourself. Because at this point, you're probably saying to yourself, well, I'm more introverted than I want to be. I'm more extroverted than I want to be. How do I go about making a transition? And if you don't know whether you are introverted or are extroverted, then go ahead and take the Myers-Briggs personality assessment. You can find that online. You can uh, pay some small price for it or maybe even find it for free. There's all sorts of different assessments out there. But the Myers-Briggs is really the best. Take that test, take that assessment, see where it places you as an introvert or an extrovert. Okay, so once you do find out and you decide that you want to make some changes because you see that being too much of an introvert or too much of an extrovert has been hurting you in some part of your life, then what you want to do is follow some of these techniques. Okay, for my, let's see, let's start with my introverts. For my introverts, if you are extremely introverted and you want to become more extroverted, here is a really good way to do it. Number one is start going to bars and clubs. Start getting out there and start interacting with people. Get into really social environments where people are free to talk. Actually, bars and clubs are great because people are drinking there. They're kind of a carefree, crazy atmosphere. And that's really going to challenge you because when you go there, first you're going to feel extremely uncomfortable. But then you're going to open up. Your shell is going to open up. You're going to get more comfortable. And that is exactly what you need to break you out of that shell to challenge you a little bit, right? to get you talking with people, get you into really highly sociable environments. And when you do that, I would even encourage you, don't drink. Do that without drinking and see how that feels. It's gonna feel really challenging and scary at first, but it's also gonna be a lot of growth. Next is 
try to join some groups. So some meetup groups, maybe religious organizations, whatever you're into, uh, Toastmasters, just groups of people who are like-minded like you and who you can interact with, who you can have, talk with. Maybe it's at a, gonna be, you're gonna meet once a week at a Starbucks, you can go to meetups.com and meet all sorts of, uh, find all sorts of groups there on any kind of uh, hobby that you have or any kind of topic of interest. Start to form those, and I don't mean internet groups, I mean real life groups, person to person, face to face. You're not gonna build your extroversion on an internet chat forum or over Skype. You're gonna build extroversion in real life, face to face conversations. And the last point, the third one, is going to be talk more. I want you to talk more. Stop being so quiet. Stop being so reserved. Be more assertive. Every situation that you get, literally, if you are talking to the checkout clerk at Starbucks, chat her up. Talk to her. Poke fun at her. Talk about the news. Talk about something that is on your mind. Or ask her a question. If you're at the gas station, do that with the gas attendant. If you're at the ATM, and you're going into the bank and you're talking to a live person, talk to the ATM teller there. If you're at work and you've got an opportunity to go to lunch with somebody, go with them and actually talk with them. Get yourself to talk more. Talk more and be more in those kind of situations. And try to leverage every single opportunity for talking that you have throughout your day, whether it's with your kids, with your spouse, but especially with strangers. I find that that's where um, your biggest gains are gonna be, is with strangers. You do not realize how many strangers you're interacting with on a daily basis that you could be talking to more and using this to, to build your extroversion. So start doing that. Okay, and now for my introverts. What can you do to become more introverted? Uh, how can extroverts become more introverted? The way that you can do this is number one, I would say, is with meditation. Start a meditation practice. Start practicing any kind of activity where you're unplugged from especially people. You gotta start to get yourself comfortable of being alone by yourself. And if this feels uncomfortable for you right now, don't worry about it, you're gonna get used to it. Being alone by yourself is a really powerful advantage for your creative thinking skills, for your happiness, for your peace, all sorts of things that I can't even go into right now. So start a meditation practice 20 minutes every day at least. Then I would say mindfulness. Practice mindfulness throughout your day. What does this mean? Mindfulness simply means that you are always aware of what you're doing. That means that when you walk out your door, your front door to your house, you walk out and you're aware of it. You notice it. And then when you come back from work at night, you notice yourself walking in. Start to notice that. You don't even need to say anything to yourself. You just kind of register. It's like, oh, yep, I walked through the door. Oh, okay, I walked through the door again. Just register that. How about every time you sit down to have a meal? I want you to start to be aware of that. Every meal that you take from now on for the next week, just be aware of it, that you're sitting down now to, to have a meal and tell yourself, oh, I'm having a meal. Just little things like that. Start to be aware of yourself. And especially when you get caught up emotionally, for example, you get angry, you get frustrated, you wanna yell at somebody, you feel really despondent for some reason during your day, you're very stressed. Have those emotions running through you, but then kind of take a step back and say, okay, I'm feeling very stressed right now. I'm just feeling very stressed. And just kind of notice yourself doing that. So it's like a self-awareness, a self-consciousness that you're developing, that's mindfulness. And then the third point is read. I find that's a really good way to get into your head is to read a lot. When you read, especially stuff that's rich and gets you thinking, gets your imagination going, gets you uh, full of new ideas. A lot of great nonfiction books are good for that, like biographies and psychology, self-help books. Are amazing for this. Not only are you going to be getting valuable information and you're going to be just uh, uh, releasing stress when you read, you're also going to be starting to think about things. You're going to start to contemplate naturally and that will get you more uh, introverted. All right, so that's it. Those are the techniques you can use. These are, uh, these are the definitions of introversion and extroversion. I hope you got some good insight from this. Go ahead, share me your comments. Tell me what you think, how you're going to work on your introversion extroversion, and of course, I'd like you to please like this and share this so that other people can, can see this content. And then of course, sign up to actualized.org. And the reason that you wanna sign up, besides the fact that we've got some exclusive bonuses, an amazing 90 minute video series, chance to win free coaching every month. But besides all that, really why you wanna sign up is because of all the content that I'm throwing out there for you every single day. I'm researching new stuff. A lot of times I'm releasing videos on, 
nearly a daily or a weekly basis with just powerful information, ideas that can transform your life from your career to your relationship to your success in any aspect of your life. Because what we're teaching you is something that few others out there are willing to teach you. We don't give you the gimmicks, the trips, and really the tricks. What we give you is we give you the solid grounding and foundation of understanding your own psychology. Because once you understand your own psychology and you start to master that, just as you are starting to do here now with introversion, extroversion, that's just a little taste. Once you start to do that, just think about the profound effect that can have on the quality of your life, the quality of your finances, the quality of your business, how you passionate you feel about your work. It's amazing. So I really encourage you to sign up and check out all the free content that we have up there and get more every week.